Hi, I'm scientist Ruby. And I'm scientist Shane. And we're here with another Do Science at Home at the Kentucky Science Center. Today we are doing a pour painting in the Maker Place. This is an example of what pour painting looks like. This is one of my personally favorite activities we do at the Science Center. Um, it is, there's so many options. It's so artistic and it's so easy to do. And so today we're gonna walk you through the materials needed and what to do. And again, this is not the only way to do this activity. Um, so there's so many different possibilities to do. Uh, so Shane, what are our materials? So we're gonna start with acrylic based paint, our Floetrol latex additive, cups, gloves, our canvas, and a tray because it does get a little messy. Um, afterwards, we're gonna use a heat gun, but you can also use a hair dryer at home. And All right. All right, so you can see that we've went ahead and already mixed up some colors. So for pour painting, you wanna have five About to five seven. To six, yeah. yeah, seven colors would be fine. Uh, you just wanna make certain that you use color theory to not make brown. You don't wanna mix a bunch of colors together that will just uh, make a really muddy canvas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we'll go ahead and mix up a new color. Right. So we've got orange. And we're gonna start with our acrylic paint. And we're going to pour in just a, a little bit, enough to cover maybe a, uh, the bottom of that cup. That looks uh, about good there. And now what we're going to do, you saw how thick that paint was. We are going to add our latex additive. This is going to be uh, what is going to thin the paint and make it uh, run a little smoother and change the consistency and viscosity of the paint. And is now, that, that is perfectly, that, that is enough, yes. And now you'll notice that it's, it's white. Uh, what's really cool about the latex additive, it's actually clear, it just looks white while it's wet. And so when we mix it together and uh, form a really consistent color in there, then the additive is actually going to disappear pretty much into the paint and make it all orange. And once it dries, it'll be a richer color. Mm. And this is probably one of the most time consuming parts of this whole activity because you really want to make sure that the color is well well blended. Right. You don't want to make you don't want any white showing at all. And a, a tip when you're mixing in cups, make certain you scrape off the edge as well because that's where some of the pockets of the Floetrol will kind of hide on you. Um, and you'll see the consistency is getting uh, much richer and more uniform across there, uh, looking a little bit like sherbet. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that looks good. It looks like our other color needs just a little bit more mixing though. Yeah, and so while we have all of our uh, colors mixed with Floetrol to change the different consistency and everything, uh, we are going to add one more thing and that is our silicone lubricant. This is nothing more than just silicone spray from a hardware store. Now Shane, what does this do? Well, so this is actually really interesting. The silicone is going to bind to the different particles in the paint and form cells around those particles and really trap them around each other. And when you uh, do the pour painting and you mix all the paint together, the silicone wrapped around the, that paint will actually stop it from mixing together. And then that's where our heat gun is going to come in handy. Uh, after we do the final pour, we can take a heat gun to those silicone cells and pop them and make some really interesting patterns on there. Awesome. All right, so we've got all of our colors mixed up. Um, we've picked colors that will complement each other pretty well. Absolutely. And then so now what are we going to do? So now we need to pour them all into a master cup. and. Uh, Put them in one at a time. You don't have to pour the entire amount of paint in there. Just mm -hmm. pour them into uh, the master cup in layers. And those layers will kind of insinuate what you want the final product to look like, but you really have no control over the, the chaos of the That's true. Process. That's the fun part about it is, right. I mean, you can use the same colors and do it so many different times, and every time it'll look completely different, which is so cool. Um, so you mentioned color theory and how you put the colors in. So based off of our colors here, what do you recommend we start with? Well, I say let's start with a bright base. So either the white or the orange. Uh, since we have a lot of orange, let's go ahead and put a little yeah. bit of orange in the first cup. That's a lot. That, that's perfect. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and add some purple. 
swirl it around a little bit. Maybe that'll help. Yep, and any, any changes that you can do to it will affect the overall product. Again, you can't really control how it's going to look, we'll but you can change weight. the variables to, uh, to manipulate the end product. And that's oh. our gold, which is going to add some real nice pop to the final product once yeah. it actually dries. I'm doing like little dots of it to see if it'll like spread out in that way a little bit. Do some yeah. pink. Yep, do some pink slash red. And I'd I say do all of that. we can end it off with a little bit more purple. Yeah, and then can we do white at the end too? Absolutely. So there's a little bit more white. And I know white really helps the colors from like contrasting a little bit, right? right? Yeah, it adds like a, a separate layer to it and prevents all the colors from just blending together. And what's really funny um, about color that most people white. don't really think about, uh, when you're dealing with pigment-based colors, which acrylic paint is, um, white is naturally one of the lighter uh, in weights uh, colors because it only deals with one pigment, white. And Just when you get to the white. primary colors, such as blue, red, yellow, it's two pigments, white and that secondary pigment. When you get into secondary colors like green, it's more pigments, thus more dense and heavier, such as blue, yellow, and white at that mm -hmm. point. So it naturally wants to separate itself anyways into uh, the different uh, densities. So there's a lot of different uh, hidden sciences in this uh, process. And then it all culminates with a uh, chaotic painting. <laughs> right. All right. So now it's the hard part. Right. So you have or to the get little scary part. the canvas on top of the cup first. And you're going to uh, brace yourself right. One, and kind of two, count to three. three. Flip, Flip over. And none of the paint's seeping out yet. So here's the real fun part. So what we're going to do, make certain we are in our tray. Because this can get messy. Very That's messy, a disclosure. Very this can get pretty messy. So you want to make sure you're doing it in a safe area that is um, tarped off, a lot of paper towels. Right. <laughs> and let's go ahead and lift that cup. All right, up. ready, set. Woo! All right, so that looks really good. We'll yes. We'll place that somewhere off to the side. And it's going to automatically start dispersing, and it will naturally reach an even you kill with everything. You can even see, like you can already see the bubbles starting to show. And those bubbles are actually from that silicone spray that we put in there. Um, now, if you left it alone, it would eventually settle into its own, might still form that mound. So Ruby is actually going to help things along by tilting the canvas and really get it to those edges. And you'll notice that the different layers of paint are still separate layers, um, and they're not really mixing together. And that's also partially due to that silicone spray. And don't worry about it dripping off the canvas. That is uh, to be expected with this process. And you really kind of have to lean into the messiness and the chaos. Mm -hmm. uh, if you do it safely and with the right preparations, you will end with a, uh, a really easy to clean up process. And what's really fun about this activity is you can really go crazy with the type of canvas, right? Absolutely. Like, I mean, you've seen people do it on like vases and cups, um, pieces of random driftwood or anything like that. So it's a really fun way to just spruce up anything that you have and you want to decorate. And what's also really cool, uh, again, you can experiment with a lot of different variables. You can even use um, colanders or a, a bottle or cup with holes poked into the bottom and use that to disperse your uh, pigments and your paint onto the actual canvas itself. And once again, you see these cells from the silicone. Fill in this corner. <laughs> Absolutely. You can also use your finger to kind of fill in the corner. Uh, but you want to make certain that you don't uh, manipulate it too much and make it like you're painting. Uh, the whole purpose of this is to let the chaos be the painter, um, which you're not doing that, that's You want fine. the beauty to come naturally, <laughs> right? right? Um, and then you can add some more control over it. Uh, we're going to investigate what happens when we take some heat to these bubbles. So I'm going to go ahead, while you're filling in the corners there, we're going to turn on our heat gun. And I'm just going to do it for just a brief moment in a couple places. And you can actually see the bubbles popping mm -hmm. and expanding. And that is that silicone bursting yeah. 
Do some of these like bigger, bigger guys. So I can manipulate it and change the way the final product looks. I can, I can ask it to change basically. I'm not able to actually directly impact anything that's happening. I can only change the variables while it's happening. And so this, since we are dealing with such thick layers of paint, it will take a while to dry. So I highly recommend putting it somewhere safe that your uh, cat won't jump What, on. it usually takes about 48 hours or more, I would say 48 right? hours, yes. And if you uh, do it on wood or unfinished canvas, unstretched canvas, uh, don't worry if it starts to warp when it dries. That is the moisture soaking into the canvas and warping a little bit, but you can always bind it back down. It's so cool. <laughs> like, look at all of the white pieces. And I mean, the white just accents the colors so well. So I mean, if you're doing this at home, I highly recommend getting some white, getting some really bright colors. The metallic is always so much fun. And I mean, this will just look different every single time. And there's no way to mess it up. It will be gorgeous every single time. And one thing it's so I do cool. want to leave us with is uh, we poured a lot of oranges into that cup. It was actually the first and the last thing that we poured in and it blended Look, so yeah. well with all the other colors. It's really like just one orange streak. All right, well, ah. <laughs> we're gonna let this dry and put it somewhere safe and try not to make any more of a mess. Yeah, and if you guys try this at home, please let us know. Like I said, this is one of our favorite activities we do here and we'd love to see what you do. Thanks, have a great day.